Hi, if you're embedding a video into your website, the last thing you want to do is send your customer, your viewer to a different web page, maybe to watch different videos or competitors video, uh, videos at the worst case scenario. This can often happen if you're embedding videos from YouTube. So there are alternatives. There are a number of video messaging applications that allow you to embed your videos into your website. So I'm just going to go through a few of those, give you a few ideas about some of the features that they offer as well, very briefly. So uh, let's have a quick look. So here's what we're going to have a quick look at. We're going to have a look at Loom, Vidyard, SendSpark, and then compare with YouTube. Let's have a quick look at each one individually. So with Loom, you can upload on the free account, and I'll be talking about the free accounts only here. You can do way more if you decide to go into a paid account with any of these um, pl platforms. So with Loom, you can upload 25 videos. 720p is your maximum resolution and you have to record the video through the Loom application or the Chrome extension browser. Loom also has, uniquely from all of these, a iOS application. So you've got a mobile application that you can make recordings and view your Loom videos as well. So that's really good. They're the lowest cost video messaging provider and they provide a lot of functionality so if you do want to go to the paid uh, paid option loom i think is a very good choice vidyard are a really good option for uh, if you've got high quality video so hd so 1080p video you can upload there's a limit i think it's it may be 25 but you're only then allowed to embed five into a website so you have that limitation but you can record your own video on your computer and then upload it to the Vidyard space or of course record it in the Vidyard Chrome application or the Vidyard desktop application which they supply as well. SendSpark is a Chrome application only but you can upload a video to that application so although it's Chrome you can still record your own video and upload it, which is really good. Uh, again, the limitation is, I think, 25 videos. And again, you can record 1080p or maybe higher resolution if you want to for uploading there. And then finally, we've got YouTube. I'm not really going to go into much about YouTube. Obviously, you've got all the high resolution that you want to and you can embed your videos from YouTube. So let's have a look now. At a page that I've created where you can see each of the embedded videos. So before we go much further, the one on the top left, which is Loom, just here, I've, I've embedded in the videos uh, just to make it clear which one is which. So these logos are actually embedded in my video. They're not embedded in the video that you will be uploading. But what you do see with Loom is that you've got this uh, embed test. So we're looking at the top left version here, top left video. You've got the name of the video. You've got the duration, how many people have viewed it, and then some options to comment. So this is the idea between the video messaging applications is that you've got people commenting and they're typically used for business people sending prospects. Um, it's a really great uh, way to engage with a potential customer is to send them a direct video directly um, to them, made for them. So the other thing you see about the Loom video is that it is animated as well. So embedded on the web page, you can get an animated version of it. That's true of the one on the right hand side, which is the Vidyard video. That's animated as well. But all you get to start with is the big black play button at the middle of the uh, viewer. With SendSpark, it's not an animated uh, thumbnail. You can get an animated thumbnail for an email, but when you embed it into your web page, it's still, but you've got this big purplish play button. And then YouTube, of course, and what YouTube does is you've got the red uh, YouTube player, uh, you've got the title of the video at the top left, 
you've got a share button and you've got a, an option to click on watch on YouTube to take you away from the website, which may be the thing that you don't want to do or one of the many things you don't want to do. You probably want to keep people on your website. So let's play each one individually and see how they look. So I'm going to click on the loom first. You've got your player controls here. You can fast forward or go back. You've got a volume control. And with Loom, you have these emoji reaction icons and a comment option as well. Uh, you've got playback controls, which give you speed controls. And you can go full screen if you want to also. Now, let's have a look and see what happens at the end of the video. And with Loom, you get this splash screen inviting the viewer to go off into Loom and get a free trial application. So that's what you get at the end of a Loom video when you're on the free account. I don't know whether that changes if you make a paid account. Let's have a look at Vidyard and play the Vidyard video. So again, with their sound, obviously, you've got your pause, you've got a Vidyard uh, link button here. And it, below it, it also says powered by Vidyard as well. When you embed it into your web browser, you've got duration, you've got some speed controls and the quality, and you've got your volume control and you could go to full screen as well. And again, you have a splash screen saying Vidyard and you can either watch the video again or this will take you off into the Vidyard space and let you either click on that or at least this I don't think takes you into a Vidyard website so uh, there's that. Let's have a look at SendSpark again SendSpark just has the play button in the middle let's play that. We've got the typical pause fast forward and um, reverse control you've got your volume control your duration a SendSpark link to the SendSpark website, your speed op uh, options and a full screen viewer as well. So that's all becoming very normal. At the end of the SendSpark video, though, you simply get the play button. This doesn't take you off to SendSpark separately, although when you play it, of course, there is a SendSpark link button just here. OK, let's get that right to the end very quickly. And of course, you've got the scrolling browser for all of these applications. Of course, finally, with YouTube, you've got the title here. We've got the player as I roll over. It turns a deeper color red. And if I click on it, it will play. We've got your normal con control. So your pause, your volume, duration. You've got uh, uh, captions here. You've got some settings which give you playback speed and your quality, That's, this is one of the few with the quality, and uh, sharing and airplay and full screen. But what happens then at the end of this, which is the problem, a lot of the times when you're embedding a YouTube video, it will often take you to a competitor's website because YouTube's feeding the viewer with what it thinks that viewer might want to see. So. You have to be a little bit careful about sharing a YouTube video because people can get distracted away from your site. So let me show you now the uh, controls you get for each of these applications. So what I'm going to do is go to Loom first. So this is the Loom web page and I've got my video in the background. I've clicked on the share button at the top here, top right. Hopefully you can be able to see that. And the... Um, the embed tab allows you to select a responsive or a fixed size, which is very good. And you simply copy the embed code here and paste that into your web page. So that's how that one works. Let's go to Vidyard. And, and both of these are I'm looking at on uh, Safari. There are Chrome extensions for each of these um, um, programs. So with Vidyard, I've got my video in the background. I called it Vidyard Embed Test. Here is the link to it. And I can simply go to embed on a site and I can just copy the code here. And you can see here there's a limitation. I've got three of five that I'm allowed to be embedded. So that's how that would work. Copy the code and literally paste it onto your uh, website. You can also copy these into 
emails and that kind of thing if you want to. So that's your Vidyard. Let me just move over to the last one, which is SendSpark. And SendSpark has this embed video option here. So you can embed it into uh, email platforms such as MailChimp, HubSpot, etc. There's a code link there. Or for website embedding, you can click on the copy embed code there and embed that onto your website. So that is how you do it for each of those. It's all very, very easy. So I hope you found that useful. Um, yeah, um, these are really useful things. And I think if you investigate any of these video messaging applications, if you're a video creator, then it's a really good idea to have a look at these because they're a really good way of putting your videos out there with much less of an opportunity for the viewer to be distracted and go off to somewhere else. I'll leave a link below to all of these video messaging applications. They're very much worth having a look at. The free accounts give you a very good insight and the paid accounts certainly extend the functionality, mostly relating to how many videos you can leave, uh, how many you can embed, uh, how long they are and the quality. So they're all worth having a look at and they're certainly worth having a look at for video messaging your own customers. It's definitely the thing of the future. And obviously, if you're an Ecamm user, you're in the video world anyway, that's a no brainer. The other thing is that all of them do support the virtual camera from Ecamm Live. So you can bring all of the pizzazz that you've created in your Ecamm Live production straight into these video messaging applications. You simply say that you're going to be uh, using the camera and select the virtual camera from Ecamm Live. And that brings all of that functionality and production value that you have been creating. Each of the applications also does have some additional functionality regarding production values, but there's nowhere near the, the things that you can do within Ecamm. So it's well worth having a look at there. I'll be leaving a link in the description below to all of these video messaging applications. So make sure you have a look at those. Um, make sure you have a subscription with me so you can follow anything else that I do on this site. So thanks for watching. We look forward to helping you in the near future. Thanks a lot.